continuing the series of weekly contest contest 292 here comes a fourth question which is check if there is a valid parenthesis string path here in this question we are given a grade of size m cross n and we need to identify if valid parenthesis string path exists in this grade or not we are we have to start from this particular position we have to go up till this particular position and as you can see that whatever is highlighted in green is a valid parenthesis string path and uh, this is what we need to do if it does exist then we need to return true otherwise we need to return false there are few constraints specified in the question the starting position is this one the terminal position is this one you can only move in two directions one is down other one is right and obviously you have to make sure that at each joining or each junction a valid parenthesis gets formed although this question is a hard question of the contest however i would say that it's an easiest of the entire contest why because there is a general protocol or the algorithm that we can apply onto this question and that algorithm is dfs search the question itself gives us enough hints on how to solve this question let's extract these hints from the problem itself you are allowed to move in two directions so one is the right direction other one is the bottom direction which tells us the path that we can follow across this grid in the dfs fashion so there are two ways out only the other thing that we need to keep track of uh, the number of opening brackets and the closing brackets that we have see seen so far in the entire grid so how can we keep track of that we can assume uh, opening bracket to be a plus 1 value closing bracket to be of minus 1 value and whenever we see a zero uh, in a particular path that means that uh, it the entire string is balanced in nature so that's another take away the third take away is you need to start from this particular position and end up till this particular position so in case you reach this particular node and uh, here you see that the total track of the value that you are the balance that you are calculating assuming opening bracket to be plus 1 closing bracket to be minus 1 if at this particular position in any of the scenario the value comes out to be zero that means a valid path does exist the fourth point that i would like to highlight is visited array so uh, when in in all the dfs problem we usually take care of the visited array that tells us whether we have visited this node in the past or not if we have visited that node then we can utilize the pre computed value in the past for the current position otherwise we have to generate that value and now let's break the suspense let's look at the actual coding logic that i have written for this and i'll follow the exact same steps as i have just talked here the first thing that i have done here is to create two variables one for counting the number of rows other one for counting the number of uh, columns that i have in the grid the next one is a visited array why visited array has three parameters one for keeping track of the row other one for keeping track of the columns and the third one for keeping track of whether at this particular balance value i have seen a pre computation in the past or not uh, it simply means for this particular cord these for these coordinates x and y or i and j and this particular value of balance have i seen or visited such a scenario in the past or not so this is the uh, balance data structure that i have created for keeping track of uh, the pre computation that i have done in the past so if it is true it means that it is a happy path it's a successful case if it is it, if its value is false it means that no it's a uh, unhappy case uh, the the path is not not balanced so far now i go ahead and invoke my dfs method it accepts four parameters five parameters the first one is a grid obviously next one is the ith index followed by the jth index and here this parameter represents the balance count so by default initially the balance count would be zero and i pass in the visited array to it uh, visited array another point to keep note of is by default initialized to null because it's of it's not of a primitive type it's an object type boolean remember this this is another important point and now let's look at the core algorithm of dfs that i have created in case my uh, i and j index are out of bounds what do i do i simply reject the algo i simply say return false in those cases also in case my balance is less than 0 what do i do i again say that let's reject this path it's not going to be a happy path for us moving ahead in case i see that my visited uh, value has been previously computed in the past visited for ij and the, for this particular balance value is already computed i simply return whatever value is stored whether it's true or false whether it's happy or unhappy 
moving ahead i create the i update the balance value so balance would be updated to balance plus in case it's an opening bracket i add one to it if it is closing bracket i subtract one from it and this is the most interesting case uh, in case my i index is the last terminal row my j index is last terminal column and balance is zero i simply return true from it so this is very important case which people often tend to miss out and write inappropriately otherwise i go ahead and i iterate in two directions one is the right direction other one is the left direction i pass in the updated balance i am moving towards the uh, right direction in this case and in this and here in the bottom direction uh, and in case from either of these two iterations i get a positive value so the valid will be updated to a happy value a positive or true value in case it is not then valid will still remain as it is which is false i once have calculated all the possibilities across these two paths right and bottom i set my visited array to the valid value that have been computed and the return the result so let's try this up accepted and uh, with this i hope you enjoyed today's session if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye take care the time complexity is again n into m into m plus n and the space complexity is also the same because we are using visited array